What's up, world? Chip Baker back with another video, and today I thought I would do one on the Hogwarts Legacy situation, the drama that's going around. Everybody's talking about exclusivity stuff, and if PlayStation's gonna hold on to different content, 72 hour early access stuff, and we're gonna jump into a bunch of different things. So let's just get right on into it, right into the situation here. So, first off, there's a lot of exclusivity stuff happening behind the scenes that wasn't announced with the pre order, which is another big controversy is that they're announcing stuff kind of after they've already announced the game and the pre orders have already launched. And they've kind of done like this big whole video for it and showcase and everything like that so we're going to look into the situation of what that is and what's being held well, let's just jump into the additions so we can clear away what's kind of locked behind certain additions what's not being held back on others and let's just get in so the standard edition in if you pre-order comes with the onyx hippograph mount now all of these editions will get the hippograph mount it's probably just some sort of flying mount i think they've showcased a few of them i know the theestral one has obviously been showcased pretty pretty prevalent out there it's put out there a bunch in the promotional material and even the trailer itself now my big concern is with the deluxe edition and the digital deluxe edition they come with the dark arcs cosmetic pack again not a huge deal they come with a the one again kind of confusing here the physical edition doesn't come with the dark arts garrison i don't understand that i don't there's really no difference between the two they both get the same thing and then also the physical edition doesn't come with the cross gen up which that one kind of makes sense because it's a digital purchase so they can't verify the physical copy there but the dark garrisons hat why wouldn't the physical edition get that again this is just from this chart here that someone's labeled out so maybe there's some confusion there i'm not sure but that is quite weird so my my big concern is with the dark arts battle arena now the battle arena is this some sort of pvp zone is this just maybe it's like a, a course area kind of like a range you know in normal games they have like a shooting range or whatever maybe this one is some sort of practice area area for your wand usage and able to use different things and kind of practice with i don't think that's a huge ordeal it does kind of suck that it being locked behind this like extra purchase bundle i don't think it's the biggest ordeal again you could probably just practice in the real world i don't think i would ever use if it's if it's just some training course thing you could just hang out there i don't think i'd ever use that if it's a pvp arena i would be a little salty i don't think that's fair at all but moving on let's get on to that, that so that covers it for the two of the deluxe edition for the physical and the digital and standard but the collector's edition we'll move on to controversy next before we get on to the big major one that just kind of leaked and came out but with the collector's edition box comes a steel case which we saw at those always happen with every every big collector's edition we also have the floating wand in the book base now this is the one that i really want to touch on because i just don't understand why they have it so lopsided and i wonder if maybe they went out and bought like a big stock of these kind of magnetic devices and they kind of just slapped them in the plastic book and just said they're good to go it would have been really cool if they designed something with the crease and the wand hovered more over the crease where it's kind of lopsided on one side again maybe that's just how they want to position it i think it looks really clunky of where it spins on that little axis there i don't think it looks good this is something they could have put more detail in. it shouldn't be plastic this should be a, a real book on the top or it should have like real pages on it and then maybe be, may have plastic parts and had kind of have like the outside of it be nice. I really think they could have gone a little bit above and beyond for $300. Sad to see that they just know that no matter what, this thing's going to sell. So they're just kind of throwing cheap product in there and pushing it off as this overall arching good thing, right? And I, But I do think the wand is cool. It's a cool idea. Again, the wand doesn't look like the best of quality. Maybe it's wooden. I've always wanted one of these things. These like either wooden wands or like the lightsabers. I always thought those were really cool. I just have never had the expendable funds to buy like a really nice one. One, so I've never gotten it, but if I ever would, I if I had the expendable funds, I would I would definitely buy like those really nice lightsabers or really nice wands. Those look really cool to me. I think those are like nice cool trinkets to have around the house. That would be something that I would love to have. I love those little kind of showcasey things. I even bought the Halo Ar Halo Reach Collector's Edition back in the day. I still have that statue. Anyways, we'll move on to the big whole controversy, and that's just that they've released some information. Chandler Wood on Twitter has just released some information. The PlayStation comes with an exclusive quest, and it will come. With with every version of the PlayStation game. It is not tied to any pre-order or pre-order bonus, and it will be for the Felix Felicis Potion Rest. And that just kind of sucks. I really do think that if we look at the movies, the Felicis Potion was used as a luck trinket or a luck potion that was given to Harry as when he won, right? When he won the thing or when he won the potion off. And so my thing is, is like, is this going to be a potion that increases your luck to where it drops better gear? That to me could be really bad. If it delves into 
that deep of level of like, hey, you could pop this potion for the rest of the game, you'll get better gear. Now, if it's like a potion you can only use at the beginning of the game to get the very beginning stuff, like different, because it's probably going to be different rarity wands that drop. I would assume so different gear that drops, different robes that probably do different things, probably an invisibility cloak. There's probably all these different little gadgets because they want to keep the game entertaining. It can't just be a person with a wand the whole time. It has different things that you can collect from different bosses, quests, and stuff like that. So my thing is, is, is this going to affect what drops? And if that is the case, then we have a real controversy on our hands here because that's a little bit of pay to win. And some people might argue, what is pay to win? It's not pay to win. You're not winning anything. It, it's a single player game, right? So there can only be so much of the pay to win. But when you beat the game, that's winning, right? If, if you get better gear and it lets you kill the boss easier and it lets you beat the game faster, then that's pay to win. You're saving time. Time is money. And if you can spend money to evade time, then that's just something that's extraordinary. Again, we can go into the delves of that. I'm not going to delve deep into that. I could do a whole pay to win video and I could rant for an hour, but we're not going to go into that. So I, I really want to defend the people's concerns of that. This could be bad because not only is this an exclusive recipe that's held to a specific platform, but there's also a quest that's held to it as well. And this could tie into something like bringing some back or maybe even being something like really big exclusivity wise. It could be a whole new boss. It could be a boss that drops a certain piece or a certain weapon that's super overpowered. I mean, this thing can go super deep with this stuff. And that's why the that's why Redditors and all these people have these big concerns is because this can lead to something that could be more than just like, oh, well, it's just one quest, guys. Oh, it's just one potion, guys. It's like, well, the quest and the potion drops you better gear. And this quest allows you to get an item that's so overpowered at the beginning, you can beat it at 10 hours, like stuff like that. I mean, granted, no one should be speed running the game like that. But you can see where the concern comes up if people are able to beat bosses easier because they paid more money or because they're on a specific platform. Well, that's just not fair and that's not right. You know, games like Elden Ring is a great comparison. They never did anything like that. You didn't get more overpowered weapons at the beginning because you paid more. Everybody started out the same. It's just one of those games, man. Like I could go on for, again, another hour rant about how, how beautiful that game is and how well it's made and how, what, what the route they took. It's just such a prime example and a golden standard for the industry that everybody should follow. And I really hope that this game doesn't delve into this more. So that's the big controversy for today. I thought I'd make a video on it. These are really big concerns for this game and I was very excited for it. And there's other stuff we could get into, like the facial animations not being as good and stuff like that. I just think that's because they're marketing the game to also older platforms like the PlayStation 4 and the older ones. You, it says there's a cross-gen upgrade, so these games are obviously for those older platforms. And so I think that that's probably why the facial animations maybe needed to downgrade. And those were probably just cinematic trailers that were they released back then where these were actual in-game footage of the facial tracking, which wasn't so bad. I can get over that type of stuff, especially if the gameplay is really fun. This is just just a big concern and it's unfortunate that they went this route i hope they take a different decision i also hope they fix the collector's edition for those people that spend three hundred dollars they deserve a lot better than that please don't have this as an, another fallout 76 situation where they just release a poor product that's what it looks like it doesn't look good i really hope they do remedy the whole situation that's it for now to the next one Deuces.